Welcome everyone to Page One for Page Books. Thank you all for coming out. Fred is here from New Zealand with his brand new book, 50 Reasons to Hate Golf. And I think we could probably all get 50 reasons pretty quickly to hate it. But you also cover the why to love it. Exactly. So, so why you, can you give us a little background on you? What do you, um, your yeah, sure. golf career and whatnot? Um, I was a, well, I played golf in university. Uh, and, uh, and then right from there, I got into coaching on college level. I was a head coach at a couple of universities for 18 years combined. Mm -hmm. And now I'm a uh, teaching professional in New Zealand. So how long have you been in New Zealand? About a year and a half. Okay. What made you move to New Zealand out of curiosity from I had, here? I had a job offer okay. uh, from a prestigious um, academy. <laughs> and the timing is right. Everything sort of pointed that way. And, and, uh, and there we are. So beautiful country. I'm just it is intensely, amazingly beautiful. I highly recommend everyone visit there. Yeah. How long's the flight? Uh, uh, it took us 18 hours to get to Florida, all in all. Wow. But again, the, the big part of the flight is overnight, so it's not terrible. Okay. You sleep a lot of you sleep. That's good. Yeah. So um, what made you want to write the book? Uh, that's sort of a gradual process. Uh, uh, in 2012, I believe it was, my wife bought me a uh, a domain name for uh, a web page. Because mm -hmm. for a while, I'd, I always thought I had something maybe to say, you know, to help people sure. learn golf and something a little different to say. And I started writing articles and uh, still do on the, on the web page, and it's done well. And then uh, after a while, uh, I started writing monthly column in one of the newspapers up in New York and then from there it, it's gone to magazine articles and, and then the book. What's, so, the, what's the website? It's called coachofgolf.com. So there's no there's no golf instruction in this book but in the in the back there where it tells about the offer it has my website you can go there and you can get some fine instruction that I think will help anybody. I actually did look over your website the other day because <laughs> we all need some help yeah. and uh, I found it really interesting actually you had a few things there that uh, that we're not, um, you know, just little tips. Exactly. That, that's perfect. Like they're hitting, you know, hitting through. The, the tee doesn't move when you when you strike the ball. You know, like that's I, a good indication that you're not hitting the ball right. I believe there are very simple solutions to complex problems, and that's the way I like to teach and and keep it very simple. I uh, give people a simple thought, and uh, it'll be successful. So you have a kind of a Raleigh Wake Forest connection. What's, I do. What's that? Well, I. My family moved to Raleigh when I was three, and I uh, was raised in Raleigh, and spent some time here in Wake Forest, uh, but uh, she spent the first 30 years of my life Very cool. in this area. Nice. So it's home, and, uh, and this is why I was, was so excited to have a signing in the area. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's wonderful. To come home, because technically the book's not supposed to be out yet. Right, April, it, right? April well, 4th. they did move the launch date up to this week. Okay. Uh, oh, because you were going to be here. Because, well, it's not just that. <laughs> it, it's because, I don't know, there's some buzz around the book and, and some events are happening. And Excellent. So they, they moved the launch up to a few days ago. Now, uh, we were talking before about you, you met your wife when you were at SCAD? Correct. So the um, South Carolina... Uh, school, Savannah. Uh, Savannah School of Art Savannah Design. College of Art and Design. Savannah College of Art and Design. <laughs> and we were just there, actually, so we got to go through the... Um, my wife and I went to a, a book convention down there and it was just gorgeous. And your wife is also an author. She's she's the author illustrator. I am not. Okay. <laughs> so, You're the golf pro. Well, it's just I've written and illustrated one book, and she's done thirty. Wow. So, uh, <laughs> she's a professional. Excellent. Still writing. Her? Yep. She just had a new book. She out just launched right? another <laughs> book. She had a book signing up in New York City last night. So she's. She's the star. So we have New York City Dogs is for the, her other her book that just it's on the shelf right over there. Yeah. And, uh, if you want to check that out, it's very good. So um, you've played all over the world. Sure. What is your, give me your top like three okay. courses. Uh, top three courses. Uh, I'll go, let's see, three to one. Uh, number three. Uh, no, I'll say number three could be a lot of places. There's no one in place in particular. There's a lot of courses I like. What I like in a golf course is I like old courses. Okay. I like courses to where it's, it's an easy walk from tee to green and not a lot of houses. Uh, I like classic uh, and 
subtle. Uh, so a lot of Donald Ross courses are very much. Sure. Um, Alex, uh, Dr. Uh, McKenzie, he's great. A lot of the old designers I really enjoy. Number two, I'll, I'll, and I can even put St. Andrews uh, as number three. I'll put St. Andrews number three. I got to play there on my honeymoon. Oh, wow. She was fantastic uh, about letting me do that. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, and um, number two would be Royal Dornick in Scotland. Okay. Uh, which, if anyone goes to Scotland, that's a must-do. It's it's unbelievable. And then number one is is what I played last year is Cape Kidnappers in New Zealand, which is ranked 16th in the world. And okay. It's, it's uh, I mean, unlike any experience you can have on a golf course. It's uh, look at the pictures. It's um, it will be a completely memorable day. So you were describing it to me earlier as a uh, you know 500 foot cliffs. A lot of the holes are on peninsulas like this, and you play out and play back, and in between are 500 foot cliffs. Yes. Yeah, it, the whole back nine is like that, where holes will go out, and it's surrounded on three sides by nothing. Get a little windy, <laughs> I'd imagine? Uh, we had a perfect day. Did you? Nice. Uh, so it was it was nice, but it, 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 when it gets windy, I let's, you could shoot. You would empty your bag uh, of its golf ball <laughs> if it was windy, you could. Um, but it, unbelievable, every hole is, like a, uh, a signature hole. Oh, wow. I mean, literally, we were playing it with my son and and a friend from the states, and we we're halfway through the front nine, and we're all sort of pitching ourselves. Like, I can't believe what I'm saying. And yeah. Every hole was better than the next, and we knew we hadn't got to the back nine that everyone says is off the charts, and it is literally off the charts. So we just uh, a year or so ago we went to Ireland and went to the Cliffs of Moher. Have you ever been there? It must be. Very it sounds same. very similar very to what similar. you're describing about exactly. five hundred sheer. Exactly, and yeah, the views are amazing. It's ridiculous, it's yes. just gorgeous, and, yeah. um, but it's windy as heck, so I can't imagine that would be right. a good place. To play. We got a good, we got a good day. Yeah. So, um, so, what's what are you doing? What's what's what are you doing now? Like here in the states, was this just a book tour kind of thing, or? Oh uh, no, well, there were some events, but obviously, all my family's here in North Carolina, mm -hmm. so it was visiting everyone, and uh, and, and again having nice. frequent events here and there. Excellent. So, so you, uh, how long are you here for? Uh, just a few more days. A couple more days. We leave on okay. Tuesday. Okay. That's exciting. Uh, everybody's, um, you, you guys are all from, uh, is your wife and so were you born in North Carolina or is it sort of like? My wife, no, she was born in St. Louis. Okay. And our son was born in Savannah where we live now. Oh, okay. In Savannah. Yeah, so, um, do you have another book in the works? Are you thinking of doing anything instructional or? Um, Cause I do, I do think your blog style is, uh, would lend itself to being um, in a book form. I think you're, it's, it's relatively timeless, you know, as far as the advice goes, it's nothing. Like Agreed, that. but you know, the last thing I want to do at the time was uh, write another instructional book. Mm -hmm. Cause there's a ton of them out there. There are, yeah. And uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know about another instructional book. I, I don't know if, we need another one. Yep. To be honest with you. Uh, what I write about isn't so earth shattering. Mm -hmm. That's common sense. It is. Uh, so I don't know. I, 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 as far as another book instruction, probably not. Okay. Probably the more I go on something more the line of humor. Yeah, I was going to say you want to do do more humorous. Uh, I think that's a bit more it. my wheelhouse. Yeah, good. Maybe. Good. Uh, and again, something that I think. I think people would be more attracted to. You want to want to read a little bit? You got a like couple of page things you can read up that are sort okay. of give people a flavor of the book. Okay. All right. Um, okay. All right. Well, Put you uh, on the spot about it. Sorry. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll read the introduction. Okay. Because um, this sort of sets a table for the whole book. All right. Uh, and by the way, some of this that I wrote is when I'm when I was writing it, I was thinking. Uh, about times when I was actually on Wake Forest Country Club. Oh, wow. Uh, I remember this vividly, and there's a passage in there that would, I can remember this very, very clearly. All right. Uh, golf, torture or pleasure? <clears throat> I began playing golf with my parents when I was about seven. My mom was a very good golfer with a beautiful swing. She'd always hit the ball long and straight. On the first tee, she would surprise men who did not know her. Uh, assuming she would hit a weak tee shot, her eyebrows would raise as she drilled the drive longer and much straighter than many of them could usually manage. Dad, on the other hand, was wild. 
he'd often hit a sweeping hook most times. In spite of this pattern, he would always seem to aim down the middle in hopes of producing a one shot out of ten that would go straight. He also had a fiery temper that wasn't conducive to playing a game that repeatedly tested his patience and constantly exposed his weaknesses. I was lucky enough to inherit my mother's tempo and temperament. I remember countless times standing in the middle of the fairway at our balls with mom laughing at dad as he attempted some ridiculous shot out of the deep woods. <laughs> After his inevitable sound of his ball ricocheting off the trees, we'd hear screams and curses of complete disbelief. He could be heard all over the golf course. In his eyes, golf was singling him out and picking on only him. My father played every weekend and many times on both Saturday and Sunday. I often wondered why Dad continued playing a game that caused him so much anguish and so seldom rewarded his efforts. Why do people like my father, and there are millions of others exactly like him, devote so much of their spare time to a pursuit that infuriates them. Golfers are a unique breed of sportsmen who seem to enjoy, on some level, pain and failure. When you think about it, golf is a pretty strange game. Its rules were developed centuries ago by a shepherd and nobleman alike. For some reason, this casual pastime caught on and became a sport that is played with passion all over the world. The game is so gripping the people who play it feel a deep attachment to golf as if they themselves invented it. Golf may be more addictive than any other sport. The first time a golfer hits a great tee shot, the quest for more begins. Hitting a ball long and true feels so good that a golfer can never be satisfied. The feat must be repeated again and again, resulting in a lifelong quest that will consume a large portion of the golfer's thoughts, energy, and free time. As a golf instructor for more than 20 years, I have found I am as much a therapist and counselor as anything else. When people come to me, they are rarely happy. Often they are frustrated, confused, and nearly at the end of their golfing rope. It is up to me to help them out of their golfing depression. We get to work right away on the physical parts of the game, but more importantly, we work on the way they see the game and themselves and how the two can coexist in a somewhat productive and positive relationship. I grew up loving golf and have been lucky enough to play and teach this crazy game all over the world. I get it. I love it, but it drives me crazy too. That might be why I love it. I don't know. It's tough to understand exactly why. All I really know is that golf gives me great joy, even when it makes me miserable. This game never ceases to surprise me with its beauty, its unpredictability, and its predictability. There's no other sport like it. 50 Reasons to Hate Golf and Why You Should Never Stop Playing explores the many aspects of golf that drives us all nuts and why we love it so. This is my love letter to golf. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So how much is, I mean, they always say like <laughs> things are a certain percentage mental more so than <laughs> golf. I've played a lot of golf and I feel like a lot of my problems are mental. Um, is that is that typical? Like, oh yeah, the, the you're not different than anyone. Yeah, um, and and that's covered in the book. Yeah. Um, uh, so um, yes, it's unlike any other sport because there's so much time between. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't react uh, to things, yeah. uh, so you can't in a split second like in tennis. You can put a cup of water ten yards in front of you, and I'm going to put the ball right in the cup. <laughs> it's just it's just tough. There's Anybody so much time so much time to conjure up demons and, yes. and doubt and fear and all those things that uh, that make you not successful. So good golf coaches are part therapists. Well sure. that's that's one thing I try to teach people is to think a lot less. Mm -hmm. And when I do and they just swing and um, they seem to get a much better result. Mm -hmm. So one thing I try to do when I'm teaching just for my an instructor standpoint, is try to have people take less time over the ball, and so that they're more athletic. Don't psych yourself into it. No, you should, uh, well, just, you, just you should not score. have. You literally should not have any thoughts while you're standing over the ball. Okay. Because as I know, uh, I've seen it <laughs> millions of times. When I see someone frozen over the ball like this, they're having all kinds of thoughts, and none of them are good. Yeah. <laughs> they're trying to remember. I can pull that with this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's not good. <laughs> I, shot in my head. And, and I can and I can assure you, nothing good is going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> so um, 
uh, it's, it's really, really important to get people to loosen up and, and be more athletic. So. Now, now you've, um, you've been teaching for how long now? Over 20 years. 20 years. So you've probably helped a lot of, what, what do you think is the sort of, um, if there's one thing everybody can do, is it just that sort of stop thinking? Um, the thing I've been focused on a lot lately is grip pressure. Okay. Most everyone holds above two times. White knuckle limit? Uh, yes, especially the right hand. The right hand is the source of all bad shots. If you're right-handed, your right hand is evil. I okay. tell you that, folks, but it's true. <laughs> um, it's true, because it's, it's everyone's dominant hand. Uh, it causes mishits. It causes crooked shots. It's Because you're pushing with it? or Well, it, 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 it's, again, this is where right-handed people they hold all their fear and their doubt. And their anxiety, mm -hmm. and they want, and this is where they control their universe. And as I try to tell people, you should hold the club no tighter than you held the steering wheel when you drove over from the left to right. And I know if people held their steering wheel as tightly as they hold a golf club, then their hand would get really, really tired. And not to mention on the road, the car would be jerking all over the road. So I try. That's the first thing I try to do. And that's tough. That's really tough for a lot of people. And um, lately, I think that's, that's what, as an instructor, that's what I've been really focused on. You know, golf is so unique in that, you know, it's the one sport you can pretty much play from a child all the way up to, you know, the, all yeah. the, the day you die, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, it's for a lot of people. So um, it, it probably really behooves you to, to get lessons, I think, at some point, so you can enjoy it more. I mean, it does. If it's just an exercise in frustration every time you go out, that you know you're not going to play for long. And again, I cover all the bases in here. And one of the mistakes people make is is they get all their golf tips from their buddies who struggle too. True. And um, uh, if you if you got lessons early and you learn properly, uh, you're going to enjoy the game a lot more rather than trying to do it all yourself. Because eventually you're going to spend the money anyway. Right. It's true. No, on balls, if nothing else. Yeah, so well, sure. balls, yeah. balls and clubs. People yeah. who have a garage full of clubs. Oh, yeah. Trying to find the right one. You can't buy yourself. It's all in here. Yeah. You can't <laughs> buy yourself. You can't buy your way out of bad fundamentals. Oh, right. Um, so invest in a teacher that you trust and, and take their advice. And the other thing is when you're learning, uh, I'm really fortunate because where we teach in New Zealand, I think we actually teach in a really revolutionary way because I've, I've taught been around golf a long time. And the way we teach, uh, I've never seen results happen so fast. No kidding. I'm sorry that we're so far away to where you can't come. And, um, well, we you give us a group rate? <laughs> yeah. Come down. Yeah. Because I actually, I'm teaching at the facility that produced Lydia Co. And we taught her since she was the age of five until she left to wow. go. Wow. So, what's so different? Um, this is it's really unique. Uh, too many pros. Who's here? Who hey? Who's had golf lessons here? Okay? So when you go to get a golf lesson, they're going to talk about the whole swing, usually, and tell you, remember this, and do this. Okay, now you're going to do this, and on and on. Now we teach, when I have a client come to me, we teach one little teeny thing at a time. And we try to create new motor skills. And we only do the swing in pieces, and we're going to talk about one thing. And when you master that, then we'll go on to the next, but not until then. Um, and it seems like a slow way to learn, but it's not. It's a really fast way to learn. Yeah, build on those. And not to mention, our students uh, are never confused. And that's the big part with golf lessons is so many times I know everyone who's had lessons say, uh, I didn't get anything out of that. Or, uh, or it didn't help me at all. And, um, you know, there are no magic wands out there. But... Um, the way we teach is unique, and again, I'm sorry, I'm whatever, 8,000 miles away, because I'd love to teach everyone, <laughs> but um, it's, th that has been revolutionary that way. Well, next time, we'll, instead of doing a, an interview, we'll yeah. just do a golf lesson, yeah, yeah. that'll be good. Yeah, yeah. So, any questions from anyone in the audience? Is yeah. this free? What? Is this free? What's that? Questions. Yeah, yeah. okay, <laughs> questions. <laughs> Your question? No uh, less. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's your one. So I got a three part question. Great. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, so I read about it. 
I've looked at it on the web, I've watched students also who have had a lesson. So what I want to know is, uh, this is proposing that I'm along the way, bad habits and everything. By the way, what, how long have you been playing? Since I was 40, I'm 60 now. Okay, and what's your handicap? Probably about a 16. Okay, go ahead. Real high. Is there such a thing as a magic move that enables a pro to hit his seven iron 200 yards? I hit my seven iron 165 consistently, and I never try to hit it 200 yards. Well, um, some of it is genetics, some of it is equipment. Because again, some people, um, uh, for instance, like Dustin Johnson. Okay, that's mm -hmm. one, of, one of the guys you're talking about. Sleep in there too, yeah. He's big, yeah, he is. He's big, he's athletic, and not to mention, when they go into tour vans to get their equipment, they, get a tweak. they have the, they have stuff on their equipment that you can't get on the market. Okay. So, and the other thing is they do is the announcers lie about how far <laughs> they are away. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they do, because, uh, one, and I know- Seven, nine, two hundred yards? Or more than that. That's again. It, it, they they exaggerate that a lot of times. Okay. And not to I'm mention. Not worried about that one. Well, all, <laughs> you know, right? yeah. And the other thing that happens a lot of times is, for instance, if it's something like that, because um, you know, it's all like that, and everyone is always like, "Whoa!" Is um, on TV flattens out everything, and so if it's 200 yards. You can't tell if it's this or if it's really downhill. And uh. if it's going really far, the hole's going downhill. So I don't need to worry about that. Don't worry about it. Right. Just so, lie like they do. Yeah. yeah. Right. So that was the first, because if there's no magic move, then I need I'm, to, I'm saying not any magic move. There's good. There's moves that definitely make it go far. Well, I need to start worrying about the uh, the angle that the iron is at when it approaches the ball. I know it helps to be yeah. at the perfect. Absolutely. But at least I won't over, overthink it. <laughs> the, the next part, the other part of the question is, they consistently hit their first tee shot greater and longer. Are they, uh, do they go up there and just flush every thought and just sort of get so relaxed that they can make that swing consistently? Yeah, How yeah, you, pretty much. The first tee shot's an important shot to everybody. Well, I, I read it. That's number one. Yeah. Um, it is, and there's a lot of anxiety there. Now again, there's a few things, because I've, I've taught some, some of the finest amateur golfers in the country when I was a coach, is uh, one, they play all day every day. So the first tee is not as big a deal as it is to the average guy. Uh, two, they practice a lot. And three, they <clears throat> they hit shots where they can eliminate one side of the golf course. Now, if if you have uh, a, a game that is going to produce a left miss, middle, and a right miss, and you know there's equal chance of all, and then you're standing over the, the ball, you're going to tense up. Mm -hmm. But if do you play a, a predominantly uh, a shot that goes across one way or the other? Yeah, lately it's been like a push to the right. Okay. Like long and right. Right. So, so if you I change the face of my club. Well, no, good. Because you have a stressful drive. Yeah, Very, good. Very good. So if you have that, then it's then it's it's pretty easy. Uh, I have an article on my website that will help you with where to tee up the ball. Okay. That will help you hit more fairways. So a lot of it is is creating angles for yourself and knowing your pattern, because a lot of people don't understand. They don't know they have a shot pattern, and they do. Now, um, and again, we can talk all day about golf, but the magic move you're talking about for me is the finish. And it's I see- not, It's not the swoosh when you get to the ball? Um, not so much. So it's not club that swoosh? Well, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that's not important, but every, every instructor has, has a move or two that's really important, and mine is what I call get to the finish line. And what that is, is most golfers, uh, when they swing, they don't finish their swing. As soon as I hit a ball, I stop. As soon as I make contact, I feel like my swing stops right there, and right. then it goes over there. Exactly, and most people do that. Now what I need everyone to do is when they swing, and it's, I know it's what I tell everyone, is, okay, the club always starts right behind the ball. Well, I'm yeah. back off of it by three inches. True. Okay, but that's but you always start the club in the same spot. Right, right. So, to, for me, when I teach, is if the club always starts in the same position, always is a definite definitive starting point, 
It must have an equally definitive finish. But very few people get to the finish. What they'll do is they'll have all kinds of finishes based on anxiety level or whatever like that. Or they're trying to steer the ball or keep the ball out of trouble. Yeah, yeah. Now what the pros do that other people don't do is they get here and they finish it looks pretty. the club talking, or excuse me, the, the club touching themselves somewhere behind their head mm -hmm. and they stay in that position until the ball hits the ground. Right. And I know for a fact, if everyone, if all amateurs would get there and just hold this position, they'll hit much better quality golf shots. And if I could give you one bit of advice, that's precisely what it is. With because, every club? Because with every club. Because they do it. They don't do it because it's pretty. They do it because it makes millions and millions of dollars. It makes the ball go where you want to go. All right, I'm all for that. It's <laughs> absolutely true. And, and see, that will help you fight fear and try to stop steering the ball. Because, right, everyone gets here and, and they slow down. And that's where the ball curves and goes offline. So, again, you get right there and hold it. Okay? Because, again, that's the finish. And if you look at all your buddies, none of them get there. And it drives me nuts. And that's the first thing I do as an instructor, is we're going to get there every time. Is and that an issue that, of flexibility or is it an issue Occasionally, of... but um, a lot of it, and then that's connected to other parts of your body, where if you don't get to that finished position, then you haven't got your weight off your back foot. And if you haven't got your weight off your back foot, you're hanging back, you're hanging back right. and you're going to hit the ball fat or thin, mm -hmm. and the blade's going to be open, yeah. and there's your crooked shot. Yeah. So... That's my magic move is the finish. Okay. I'm good. And until I get people to hold that finish, we can't do anything else in the lesson. Because if they have uh, 20 different finish positions, like me. we're going to get 20 different outcomes. Mm -hmm. So if I can get them to finish in the same spot every time, we're going to see a pattern and your dispersion is going to come way in. And that's where I would start. Okay. I read an article about that on the website. You should read it. Don't oh, cross right. the finish line. <laughs> I am. Okay, another one is about the golfer's Achilles heel. The other article is called that, and it explains all these things. Not to mention, if you don't get your finish, you can be very likely to hurt yourself. That's where a lot of bad backs come from. Hmm. Okay? And you'll hit it straighter, farther, and you'll have less pain. Okay. Good? Excellent. All right. Excellent. Yes. Money right there. The, um, <clears throat> Related to this gentleman, I have a friend who swears that the pros use technically a different ball than the amateurs, and I keep telling him that's a little paranoid because I don't think they can. But no. how, how, but how much of the tweaking of their shafts and I mean they have core ratings and CC sizes, sure. but something's got to be going on because never mind that they're pros, but pros from 15 years ago to now. Sure have taken a quantum leap in their distances, and I know they're not that much stronger. Well, that's the so golf ball. Something's going on. Yeah, that's the, yeah, some of that's golf ball, some is the shafts. Because again, there's a lot of shafts out there for drivers that are really good, and then there's some shafts out there that are exceptional. And some of those shafts on the drivers they're using cost thousands of dollars. <laughs> and they're thousands of dollars for a reason. And um, not to mention, uh, the longer a shaft is, the farther the ball is going to go also. And they can control it better than the average person could. Yeah, you yeah. lose control with the lift. You're, gonna, you're always going to, you can't have everything. You're either going to have distance or accuracy generally. And this is why over the years, you're seeing uh, pros miss more and more fairways. Because they're going to longer shafts, and the ball is going much farther, they but they're hitting fewer fairways. But they're close to the green, so it's not in such much of an issue. So there's a number of factors involved. And you can see just the, the way a golfer looks now as opposed to 15, 20 years ago is vastly different. They're superior athletes. Mm -hmm. so. So. Well, one sec second yeah, question. <laughs> yeah, second like question, if I, if I can. What do you think about a lot of the, I call, them, I call them gimmicks. I'm a mom, I'm not used to sitting down. What's that? My daughter. What do you think about the gimmicks that a lot of pros have? The accessories of the rods the and the, and the things. Just read that one. Baby. Okay, I'll just read that one. Okay. Looking like the guy in tin cup that seen where he's going. All right, training I don't know aids. What Thank number you. that is? But uh, again, it, it, everything you guys are talking about is pretty much in here somehow, somewhere. Uh, let's see here. I don't know what number. You want me to find it for you? No, it's okay. 
There you go. Seven, Number 41, training aids. Golfers are the most gullible, wishful, and desperate people in sports. <laughs> they will purchase any product that claims it will help them shave a stroke or two off their score. Thank you. Every crazy contraption conceivable is sold to these poor souls who long for a quick and easy cure for their poor technique. Okay, and here's what I write in response to that. <clears throat> Trained aid. There are no shortcuts in golf and certainly no quick fixes. You can't buy your way out of poor fundamentals with something you saw in an infomercial at 2 a.m. It is a fact that even with the explosion of technological advances in golf, in general, golf handicaps have not improved in the past half century. Quality golf swings and shots are born out of hard work and ingraining proper technique. The good news is that anyone can improve their golf if they make a commitment to learn from a quality PJ teaching professional. Getting tips from your buddies who also struggle or using gadget that promises instant results does not work. If you learn golf properly, your reward will be enjoying this great game for the rest of your life instead of fighting it every day. And that's just the, the truth. It, it, it's, it's like anything. When I have, you know, um, people come to me for golf lessons and they say, okay, I Fred, I want to get three lessons. And I'm like, listen, we need 20 lessons. <laughs> um, and we do. There's a lot to cover and there's a lot of things to undo and relearn and, again, create new motor skills. And everyone wants the quick fix and, and this, that, and the other, but there's, there's just, there just does not exist. Uh, again, we've all bought training aids. Uh, some are good and some are not. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people are trying to make a dollar off of these. And some of them are very good, but they usually the best ones are the very, very simplest ones. Like alignment sticks. They can be used for dozens of things rather than just laying them on the ground. I teach with alignment sticks, one of my main training aids, but we do all kinds of things with them instead of just laying them out in a tee or railroad tracks. There's plenty of things you can do. But um, mostly, you know, go ahead. Fred, because yes. of the breast factor, is it, in your opinion, better for a woman to try to teach a woman or for a guy to teach a woman? Uh, boy, that's a... Um, I teach plenty of women, and I like teaching women. Me, yeah, I would too. <laughs> well, no, I like teaching women for, for not the reasons you're, ta you're talking about or going through there. Uh, I like teaching women because women learn faster than men. Sorry, guys. Huh. Uh, because, for one, when I teach a woman, uh, the between men and women are, here's the difference between men and women teaching in golf. This is, is another book. Is, <laughs> is, is, is men want to hit it as far as they can. That was the first statement he made. And women are more interested in form. They're interested in doing it correctly. And because of that, women learn much faster and they learn correctly. Men just want to smash it. It's the caveman mentality, it's the whole thing. So as far as the breast thing, uh, I usually, we discuss this in a very tactful way. And I say, are we going over or under? <laughs> and it's based on build. And they know. And, and, and one's gonna and one's gonna work and one is not gonna work. Right. So it's just that easy because the physiology is different and um, we have to discuss it. So a woman doesn't have to be the one that teaches. It doesn't. Right? No. No. Um, I again, I really enjoy teaching women. Some of my favorite favorite clients are women. And uh, and again, as someone who I wrote here, my mom was a fantastic golfer. Yeah. She was club champion at Wake Forest. Was she really? She was. She was a two handicap at her best. And um, and. Because of that, growing up with her, I was always a fan of women golfing. She was so much fun to play with and so good. And um, and to this day, I can't think of many people I think uh, can think of who putt better than she ever putted. Uh, she was just a joy to play with. And at Wake Forest, we used to have uh, Super Bowl tournaments all the time. And everyone would thank the lucky stars when they drew mom uh, because they knew they were going to win. <laughs> matter of fact, most times the guys wouldn't even tee off. Uh, because at Wake Forest, especially, the tees were yeah. such a disparity. They really was a waste of time to tee off. Wow. Uh, because anyone who... Cause they, First hole was a par six. It was. It's not, well, well it's yeah, it was, six. yeah, because she would be on her drive. She'd be up right by the creek. Right. Um, you got to be there to get anything, yeah. Yeah, so um, anyway, so I, I love teaching women. Um, I, I don't necessarily subscribe to that. I'll stop pushing. No, 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 this is good. <laughs> Anybody else?
Any other questions? I don't have any questions, but um, being in the insurance industry, it's all intense mm -hmm. with the executives and stuff, which is why I'm here. Um, it's in the book. Yeah. Well, and I actually, it was a lot of it was um, online already, but you get like little sneak peeks in there. And I will tell you, after observing men and women for the last 20 years in golf, you hit the nail on the head. It's true. Yeah. Um, do you play? I do not. You My priorities play. are different <laughs> for time and money. Because <laughs> both of those, it, it takes a lot. It does. It does. But once again, and I teach a lot of women who have started later, and everyone says the same thing. I wish I had done this. Okay. Absolutely. If, if I had to do it over again, I probably would have invested the time, but I, I don't completely regret it because you do have to spend so much time away from other priorities in order to be good. Of course. Yeah. But in your industry also, there's a lot of opportunities to play for business. That And that is where it would be a lot better. of fun. But you know what? I just drive the golf cart with beer, <laughs> and I get as much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, um, what else do you have coming up for while you're here? Okay, well, this is exciting news, uh, and this is exciting for those who are here because it's my last stop before we head down south. And uh, uh, last week, we the Golf Channel got in touch with us, and they want to interview me next week. So, um, I will have an interview about the book on uh, Morning Drive. Uh, I think it's going to air on uh, Valentine's Day. Oh, very nice. So I guess this, this is my last stop before we do that. So we'll be that's really sure to check that out. That's great. Yeah, that'll be exciting. So, that's very so yeah, exciting. that's very exciting. Yeah. Um, so uh, we do that, and then I almost literally hop on a plane. Oh wow! So and we don't have that show over there, so I won't see it. So <laughs> people tell me. Some, I'm sure somebody's going to DVR it for you. Yeah, so I hope so. Do you know Steve YouTube. Williams? I don't know. I know of him, but I, he lives. He lives pretty close to where I am, but. Uh, you don't see him much there. He's sort of on his own now, doing his race car stuff and stuff yeah. like that. But he's oh, he's so from he's doing race cars now. Well, he was always doing always race cars. cars. But yeah, I guess he's doing it more. Yeah, he's he's he retired last year, okay. but he's doing the, the occasional event for Adam Scott still. Okay. But I see Lady Co. Wow, I'd love to see her. Maybe I got her swing on my phone if you want to see it. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, so I think we all do. Yeah. So. More questions. Mm -hmm. Kind of amazing that a caddy like Steve Williams probably made right. more money yeah. in his career yeah. than yeah. Tom yeah. made in his exactly. life. Exactly. And again, Those are the times. well, Steve Williams, I think, should be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. He I will do. Because he, no he caddies are there, but he should be. Because he all the caddies. Because everybody he grabs. Yeah. Oh my God. All the majors that he's won. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't even know how many majors yeah, he's won. Yeah, he'll be there. Uh, no, you had a question back here. Oh, I was wondering how you found the process um, different, more challenging, or you preferred from you know, your website writing and magazine writing to publishing a book. Is this your first book? It is. Well, I know um, you had some expert advice in house, but well, <laughs> it, it, it was it was different because I wrote for fun before, mm -hmm. and then after I signed the contract, you have a boss. Uh, it, uh, everything ch everything changed. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a, a, def a very definite timeline, mm -hmm. and there was immediate pressure. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you do it, you're like, I don't know if I can do this, mm -hmm. and. Um, you hope you can, and uh, and, and again, it was, we had, were on a very strict schedule, and it took a long time. I think it took eight months from start to finish to get the, the project done because I wrote and illustrated it. I saw that. So um, and designed it, the whole thing, and, and so it's there was a, there was a lot to do, and then when you get into it, you realize there's a lot to do because there's it goes through multiple edits and mm -hmm. all these things and all kinds of scrutiny, and. Um, and uh, it was just a whole other animal when you saw, you know, they shipped me, okay, here's the schedule, we need this by this, and this by this, and then it went on and on and on, and week after week after week, and you're like, okay, this is... Uh, yeah. And you were still teaching while you were... Yeah, I, I did this in my spare time. So it took up, it took up uh, my days off and a lot of evenings. So, so how did you, and I, I have a side reason, I know why she's asking that question. I, it's my daughter. Anyhow, <laughs> uh, so you contacted a publisher because your wife is a publisher at the time. Well, we had. Uh, so getting a publisher can be difficult. That's really difficult. I, that's where I'm blessed because I have a wife who is, is there, and again, her publisher 
I could say this though. I, it wouldn't have happened if Fred hadn't had the, his. He was like a columnist for the oh, newspaper for Saratoga, and that yeah. was the thing that did it. Right. Because the publishers that I was working with started really being interested in him. Right. They were interested with the blog actually, right. and then when they saw the newspaper pick it up, they were more interested. And they were for a long time. It took a couple of years. Like they kept trying to find the right book and the right fit and right. the right season for the schedule at the publishing house. Right. And um, then it just finally all kind of came together. They were wanting to work with Fred, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, the, con had the content of what they saw. Yes, exactly. Well, it wasn't so much that because this, <coughs> this book morphed. We had sort of another idea, mm -hmm. and, it, and it sort of kept sort of evolving into something a little bit different, a little bit a little different to this, and then it finally became this. And, uh, and again, I hadn't written a book before, so it was it was all a very new thing. And uh, But the idea was solid, and when that came about, we sort of determined okay what the it was going to sort of be because originally the, the title was just going to be 50 reasons to take golf mm -hmm. and i had to come back because i was sort of the expert in this they don't know anything about golf i said listen right. we can't call it that right. because golfers won't buy it right, right. it'll be a gag book yeah. and i want i want golfers to buy it right. so that's how it went in here and then that's when i said okay let's do a compare and contrast mm -hmm. and um and, and it just it went from there you, uh, when you, so when you were at SCAD, you, was the intent you were going to do illustration or design or, of some sort and well, golf got in the way? Or? Uh, I, I sort of did things backwards. I was a graphic designer for many years in Raleigh. Okay. Uh, worked for Glaxo right on their oh, creative okay. team. Yeah. Uh, I worked for a large um, graphic design firm for many years. And then after that, I went back to college and got my degree. Okay. And I was... The original idea was I, I wanted to teach, be a professor at college, uh, and then you know one thing leads to another, and then so it just it was just again it was everything came together because I was a graphic designer for many years, and I was a golf coach for many years, and and I had all the training I did graphic design and did illustration yeah. stuff like that, and then when we were trying to get the idea for the book solidified. I told the publisher I was like, this guy is born to write this. I'm born to do this. Not at all. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is everything. The, all my strengths are right here. Right. Yeah. You know, right. All of them. That's awesome. So, um, uh, I don't know. It was just a perfect year for Very good. Well, it's an excellent book. Well, thanks. And we have, uh, we'll have signed copies available for any, anybody that couldn't make it. Um, we'll have some signed copies available after the fact. And uh, Fred would be happy to sign any books Absolutely. for you now if you'd like. Sure. And um, that's it. Thank you for coming. Thank you appreciate all for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you.